Hi, I'm Adam from Watford Opinions, and that match was boring and lackluster, to put it bluntly. It still seemed as if we had Ivic as manager, just to be fully honest. Um, the selection, the squad selection, was interesting. I mean, the fact we've done two matches in a row now with Will Hughes at left midfield, when we have Philip Zinkernagel, I don't know what's happened to Ken Sema, but still, we have... Will Hughes in the left side of the midfield. When we have a very versatile, talented winger on the bench, that just doesn't make sense to me. And it didn't work last match, so thinking it would work this match didn't make much sense. Now, Hughes did perform decently um, before he was moved centrally. One Synchronagel finally came on, but at the end of the day, it just doesn't really seem to make sense to me. Andre Gray, I, I want to see the clips of uh, training because I don't know what he's done to keep taking Zhao Pedro's starting spot because Andre Gray, he gets into decent positions, yes, but his his return is, uh, you can't sugarcoat it, it's awful. I mean, and it doesn't really seem like there's any signs of that improving, so I don't know why Zisco is starting Pedro over, starting Gray over Pedro. On Twitter, I've seen people saying, what if Zisco doesn't actually make the team sheet? I, I doubt that's true, but it, it would explain some things for sure. Um, I mean, overall, uh, Watford, we were the better performers in the match. And if anyone was going to grab a winner, it would have been us. But the clinicality just wasn't there. As, as I said, it kind of felt like Ivic was still in charge. And... That being said, the, the the pitch was a bit poor, but you can't blame the pitch, obviously, especially considering the amount of chances we had, the number of shots we had, the possession we had, regardless of how the pitch is. If we can't find the back of the net once against Millwall with the performance we were putting in, then there's something's got to change. And whether that be Zisco's tactics, because it still doesn't seem like we're getting that true attacking football that... We've been promised the entire season, first under Ivic and now under Zisco, but that philosophy still hasn't really come into play yet. So, I mean, I personally still don't believe it is necessary to have a quote-unquote prolific striker in order to be promoted. As in West Brom last season, they were promoted and their two top scorers had 10 goals each. Dini and Pedro were both on six. Like, imagine them both scoring four more times and us getting promoted. Like, we don't need a prolific goal scorer per se. But the way things are going, it, it seems like we like we kind of do need some sort of prolific goal scorer to really set us apart and make sure that our success is sustain sustainable. Because we haven't really been blowing teams out of the water at all. We've been grinding out results. And yes, right now we are second place. That that of course other teams around us have games in hand. So I think if everyone wins that game in hand, we drop down to fifth. Um, but still, like, we're, we're healthily in the playoff spots and automatic promotion is still on our site. So it's not to say that we're in a bad situation right now. Like, no, a draw, it could be worse than a draw. It could be a loss. So a point is a point away regardless. Um, so the season is still going well. It's still, I'm pretty sure we've still started this season better than we did the 2014-15 campaign. Um... But to uh, really keep consistently grinding out results and grinding out wins, I am really starting to think we do need to bring in another attacking player this window and Trent not make sure Gray isn't starting at least half the matches because unless his form tremendously picks up, he's done nothing in matches to signal that he should be starting over Pedro or anyone else. Um, so I, I do think that in the closing days of the transfer window, it's going to be very interesting to see who we bring in. I'm hoping we bring in another attacking player because we're, the, fa the fact we have to keep grinding out results, that's okay if we're able to keep on doing it, but it definitely still doesn't seem like a guarantee because while we, we were able to grind out a result against Stoke, and that was a good performance in the second half, admittedly, we were able to grind out a result against Barnsley, we weren't able to grind out the result today and to be promoted, especially to earn automatic promotion, you have to be able to grind out the matches like today. So a point's a point. The performance wasn't bad and it's, it's just 
I guess also one other thing is it really didn't seem like we were playing with any sort of sense of identity. There wasn't really any good direction. So, I mean, the season's going well. Um, and a point's a point away from home, as I said. But, I mean, it's just got... There has to be more attacking creativity, and if that attacking creativity needs to come from a transfer signing, then so be it. And, yeah, that's, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you.